Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I wanted to give you another example of a mixing problem and help you develop a model using our differential equations. Now, the way I want you to think about these mixing problems, they're not as hard as they might come across the first couple of times you do them. But think of them as a system that is constantly changing, and you're trying to figure out how to model those changes in the system. Probably the best way to deal with a problem like that is first by drawing some sort of free body diagram and figuring out what information that you have and what information you don't have. So if you have a tank with a volume and you've got a flow rate and a concentration going in, an initial concentration in the tank and some sort of concept going out, you have enough information that you can lay out and start to develop some sort of differential equation. Again, keeping in mind that what's going on inside of this tank is constantly changing. You know, whether you're putting in a concentration into pure water, a pure liquid, or you're putting a pure liquid into a known concentration, or two concentrations. Something is going on in this from every given moment, and that concentration is constantly in, in flux, or constantly in change. Especially the fact that it's going out, you know, trying to measure that output, we're assuming this is a perfect mixture. And you can figure out what that mixture is based on what's leaving the tank. So keeping that in mind, you it's better just to lay out everything, you know, with a free body diagram. It'll help you keep track of the information. But let's go through some more ways of just dealing with this in a methodical way. So first, you know, like I said, you want to establish the rate that is being added to the system as well as what type of concentration. So so what do you have going into that tank? And how fast, what's the flow rate that's going in? Liters per minute, gallons per minute, per second, whatever the, the issue is. This concentration can be a percentage. It can be a kilogram per gallon or you know some amount of uh, solution that's actually going into that tank. You know, some sort of substance that has been dissolved into another, into a liquid medium that's being pumped by flow rate. And you want to find out how much of that amount of that substance is in it. So what's going on into the tank? Next, you want to establish some kind of a function for leaving. So what's going on here? You know, which is going to be the same for what's inside of this tank. Uh, you've got a known volume that the tank is. You know, that'll be given to you, or usually it's given. And you've got some concentration, you know, whatever we're dealing with, that is constantly changing. Like I said, this the, what's going on in this tank is in a constant state of change, and you got a flow rate. So since you got you don't know the exact amount of anything in the tank, you're gonna have to write it up as a as a function. Next, you want to put this in the form of a differential equation. Now, so the rate of change of what's going on in that tank with respect to time is going to be equal to whatever concentration is going in minus whatever that concentration is going out, you know, at the rate that they're both changing or going in and out at. So the difference between these two defines what's going on inside the tank. All right. So that's the, one, you know, another thing you want to keep in mind. So that's your differential equation. You know, you're, you're dealing with a instantaneous rate of change. Fourth thing is you want to put this equation, this differential equation into a standard form, you know, something that you know how to solve. Then you want to actually solve that differential equation, you know, based on whatever standard form it matched. And if you have an initial value, which you should have an initial value time zero, you know, and a concentration, you can have a particular solution. And that can be a model that you can use to understand what's going to that tank at any instant. OK, so so we've got a concentration going in concentration coming out we've set up a differential equation put it into a standard form and we solve that differential equation and we develop a model from there so we've got a a method of actually handling this so let's go ahead and look at an example so we got another example and then i just made up you know got this clip art here for you know a free body diagram so we've got a tank this tank you know, is 1000 liters of water. And in that tank, you have 15 kilogram 
of salts dissolved into this thousand liters of water. So we have a concentration 15 kilograms for 1000 liters is where we're starting at at time zero. Uh, we have fresh water, you know, meaning there's nothing in the tank and there's no salt. So this is just fresh water going into the tank at a rate of 10 liters per minute. So we got 10 liters per minute going in. You're draining 10 liters per minute going out. So the volume is going to stay the same and you've got no salt going in and you've got uh, initially the tank's got 15 kilograms of salt in 1000 uh, liters of water. So now you got to try and understand what's going on with the salt in this tank. Now, just without doing any math, we know that if you've got a tank with salt in it and now you start pouring pure water in and you're draining tank or draining uh, the solution out that the salt in the tank should be going down. You know, so you're going to start with 15 kilograms and as you, uh, that system flows, you're going to go 15 kilograms and we should expect this, this model to be a decreasing model. You know, if we were to graph it, we'd expect it to be a decreasing function. So 15 and going down. So what we want to know is how much salt is in the tank at any given time T and which mean basically tell us what a model for this is and then figure out what that model is at 20 minutes. Okay. So we need a mathematical model and we want to know what that model is at 20 minutes. And if this, if we do it right, intuitively, we know that it should be something less than 15 kilograms of salt. We don't know exactly what, but it should be less than 15. If we do our model and we end up with say 17 kilograms of salt, we know we made some kind of mistake that shouldn't work based on just the logic of the problem that is presented. So let's go ahead and, and put, take this and start uh, dealing with this a little more for a differential equation. So we got this basic differential equation that we know we can start off with the rate of change of X, which is the amount of salt per unit time is equal to the rate we're putting salt in minus the rate of salt we're put rate that we're taking the salt out in the form of a solution, all right? So we can look at it this way. So what's going in? Well, we got pure water. So zero kilograms per liter of salt and it's flowing at 10 liters per minute. All right. So this is important. It's got no salt going in. All right. But we are, we do have a flow rate of 10 liters per minute. We don't know exactly how much salt is going out. You know, that's what we're trying to find ultimately. And it's a thousand liters that we're initially starting with. Again, we're talking about the rate, you know, so it's constantly changing. And as we know that the rate is 10 liters per minute. Now it starts off at 15 kilograms for 1000, but like I said, that's changing. We don't know what that's going to be at one moment to the next. So we have a differential equation, but this is zero, right? So this rate going in as far as how much salt is going in is zero. We do have 10 liters per minute of just pure water. So the, in relation to salt, it's zero. And we've got this function here minus X at time T kilograms per 100 minutes. And the way we got that 100 minutes is just by solving this. So we, the liters cancel out 10 over a thousand is 100. So X over T per minute. So 10 kilograms per 100 minutes. So that's where that, that number comes from. And again, the same here, those liters cancel 10 times zero equals zero per minute, zero kilograms per minute. So that's you know, where the units, so the units do match up. So when we put it into this form, we just go ahead and take this out of the equation. We end up with dx over dt is equal to a negative x over t, the amount of salt per 100 minutes. So we've got a separable differential equation. So this is the form that this takes. dx over dt is equal to a function of y, you know, the dependent variable times the independent variable. Now you could also write this as a division, but that's the, the standard form. And that's what we have here. So we got the de dependent variable, the independent variable, function of time. All right, so we have a standard form of a differential equation and we know how to solve this. 
So let's go ahead and start moving forward with a solution. All right. So here's our uh, separable differential equation. So let's go ahead and remember a separable differential equation. You multiply times the you know, both sides by the related variable, the differentials. So we get the x's on one side, differential of x and the x variable, the differential of t with the t variable, or dependent and independent variables. So we multiply both sides or divide x sub t on both sides, multiply d sub t on both sides. So we've got the x's and the t, so just like any separable differential equation, integrate both sides, which means you've got natural log of x is equal to this constant of 1 over 100, negative 1 over 100 times t plus c. I did skip that integration step, but that's what how we got to that point. We just integrated both sides. Now we multiply or use base e on both sides. You can remember the base e's cancel with natural log. So you're left with x. It should be x of t, but you know you, that counts just as x. And when you've got this to base e, you can remember c to base e is a constant. And e ra this raised to base e is just e raised to the negative t over 100. All right. So that is our solution. All right, that is our general solution. And we do have an initial value. Remember at time zero, the tank had 15 kilograms of salt dissolved into 1,000 liters of water. So that is our, our initial value. So at time zero, we had 15 kilograms of salt. So at time zero. So if we go through this, we find that this goes to 1, which means that our constant of integration is 15, right? So we've got this one solved for it as an initial value. So our concentration of salt at any given time t is equal to 15 e raised to the negative t over 100. All right, so now we've got a mathematical model. You know, using this model, we can track the amount of salt at any given time. And like we said, we know that we're putting pure water into this tank, so we expect the salt to keep going down. You know, it'll never be higher than 15. So if we look at this at 20 minutes, which is what we were told to, so we got the model, we look at this at 20, t equals 20. So we put uh, 20 as the time. So 15 times e raised to the negative 20 over t, or 1 over 5, you know, in 20 minutes, we'll have 12.28 kilograms of salt dissolved in that thousand liters of water, which makes sense. You know, you expect the amount of salt to keep going down with pure water going into the system. And if we were to graph that, you know, you got the initial value based around this function, you know, put this into Excel. We can see that at 20 minutes, you know, based on the Excel spreadsheet using my same function, it comes out to 2.28. You know, and if we were to keep going down, you know, eventually it's going to go down to zero. And this is just a graphical form of that same function of what's going on inside of that tank. So if you have any type of solution that you're trying to deal with, you can actually come up with a mathematical model and start to graph it what that time you know, what that amount is going to be at any given time uh, of of your your system during its constant changes. So now here's another problem I want you to look at, you know, just for you to something to think about. So here we have a new problem, a tank with 80 gallons of water and 40 pounds of salt is dissolved in those 80 gallons. All right. You know, so we got a well mixed fluid leaving the tank at 10 gallons a minute. So same as any of other problems, the fluid is assumed to be well mixed. But that's going into one inlet. All right. In inlet A, you've got an input of 8 gallons per minute and a concentration of 0.5 pounds per gallon of salt. In inlet B, you've got a rate 
of eight gallons per minute of just pure water. So in one inlet, you've got uh, two gallons per minute going in and your concentration is 0.5 half a pound of salt in those in that two gallons per minute. In another inlet, you've got eight gallons of just pure water, no salt at all. And you have the tank with eight or excuse me, 80 gallons of water with 40 pounds of salt. That's the initial condition. And it's leaving at 10 gallons per minute, like I said. So it's leaving as a well mixed, perfectly mixed fluid at 10 gallons per minute. So let's find a model for concentration, whatever is in this tank at time t. So this is the benefit of a free body diagram. You know, consider what's going on in inlet A, what's going on in inlet B, and what's coming out. So let's look at a few things. Let me give you a few questions to, to think about. You know, what's the concentration of the tank before the pumps come on? You know, what's happening to the level of the water? You know, what's the concentration of the tank actually doing? And what impact is the inlet B having on the system? All right. So I want you to think about all those things as you go through that particular problem. All right. So thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon.